So you weren't feeling well and you went to the walk-in clinic. They swabbed your nose and they told you you're suffering from a case of influenza type A. Yet your best friend's little boy is suffering from influenza type B. So what's the difference between influenza type A and influenza B? Well, we're going to find out today because there are some big differences, including the severity of the disease. When we're looking at influenza viruses, there are four types, A, B, C, and D. Yet, we're only concerned with A and B. The reason being is C usually infects animals, and if it does infect a human, it's extremely mild, and D only affects cattle. So A and B are the big strains we're concerned with. And of the two, A gives you a more severe form of the disease. But why if they're both viral influenza? Well, we have to look at the anatomical differences between the two. Influenza A has two spike proteins on its surface, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Now, I made a video on the avian influenza a few weeks ago, where I discussed this in detail. I'll put the link to it in the description. There are multiple numbers of the H and the Ns, and depending on how they blend together, you could develop different forms of influenza virus of varying severity. Compared to influenza type B, it doesn't have these surface proteins. Instead, it has a lineage. And the lineage is only two types, the Yamagata and the Victoria. And of the two, the Yamagata seems to have disappeared since 2020. So the Victoria is the primary strain of influenza type B that's been going around for the last five years or so. Because it only has that lineage, it doesn't change and it doesn't mutate nearly as rapidly as influenza type A. Therefore, we've seen it for a longer period of time. We're accustomed to it. Our immune system knows what to do with it. So it usually gives us a significantly less severe form of the disease. Influenza type A is capable of infecting humans and animals, particularly chickens and pigs. Therefore, if it mutates, it can cross the species. And when it crosses a species, the new host usually gets hit particularly hard because the immune system is not accustomed to this new strain of virus. Influenza type B only affects humans. And of the humans, it tends to affect children significantly more often than adults adults more often get influenza type A. Influenza type A, because of the constant ability to mutate and change, causes epidemics and pandemics. Influenza B never does. And these anatomical differences are the reason why influenza A tends to be more severe than influenza B. But let's look at the disease influenza anyhow. When you have influenza, there are basically three phases. First, you have the incubation period. The incubation period, you're walking around and you feel just fine, but you're shedding virus and you're capable of contaminating individuals around you. A few days later, you start to go into the prodromal phase. You just don't feel right. You might be achy, you might be tired, maybe a little scratchy throat. You know something is off, but you don't feel particularly bad. Then you go into the active phase. The active phase seems to hit out of the clear blue. I personally had an experience where I wanted to buy a Hot Wheels Camaro and I went into the showroom and I felt great and I was in this car, I thought it looked so cool and I stepped out of the car and I felt rotten. And by the time I got home, I felt like I was gonna die. I had fever, chills, body aches, a cough, which I didn't have three hours before. The reason why is you go from the prodromal to the active phase fairly quickly. Now, usually you feel sick like that with the fevers and the chills and the cough for a while. Most of the time, seven to 10 days, it can go for 14 days. Influenza type B causes basically the same symptoms but to a lesser extent. Now, even though influenza type B is a milder form of disease, it still can run you down and it still can kill you. 
you would have to be either the extremes of age or have multiple comorbidities when you get influenza type B. Both of these viruses can run you down and allow secondary infections to occur, most commonly a pneumonia. That's why when you hear somebody dies, they don't say they died of the flu, they died of a pneumonia. The reason being is that they got run down and allowed secondary infections to occur. And the treatment for each is basically the same. Bed rest is key, maintaining your fluid status by drinking, and maybe taking antipyretics for the fever and body aches. So now you know the difference between influenza A and influenza B and what you should watch out for. If you want to learn more about the avian influenza, check out my video on the bird flu. It goes into great detail of how the virus replicates and how it mutates to create greater forms of disease. Take care, have a good day. And remember, give me a thumbs up, click the bell, hit subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.